Hi, welcome back. So in this lesson, we'll talk about test planning and important considerations that need to be understood by the test managers. So to remind you, we are talking about the first chapter that is our testing process. And within that first chapter, we are talking about the topic called test planning, monitoring and control. So let's get going. So we have talked in the previous lesson about test policy, test strategy and then how those test policy and test strategy drive our test planning. So let's put all of them together. So we have what we call a test policy at a company level and it identifies or talks about the testing mission for the company followed by testing strategy. So testing strategy talks about broadly about what test levels to be implemented, how testing has to be done in those test levels and it talks about some testing objectives at a very measurable way. Then followed by the company might do multiple levels of testing based on the nature of your development model. Component testing, some teams may use integration testing, then system testing followed by user acceptance testing or acceptance testing. So we, for each of these levels of testing, a fundamental test process is applied. So what is the activities involved with fundamental test process? We will have planning and control activity, test analysis activity, test design activity, test implementation activity, test execution activity and then followed by evaluating exit criteria and reporting and then test closure activities. So this is what we talked about our fundamental test process. So all this can happen irrespective of your SDLC model. It can you can be using a sequential waterfall kind of SDLC model or you may be using an iterative or incremental or iterative and incremental models such as agile. So putting all together the policy strategy the multiple levels of testing that is how we have to fit everything. Now let us talk about the test planning in this context of test policy, test strategy, levels of testing, fundamental test process and the SDLC. So for everything a test manager should always begin the test planning as early as possible and it has to be tailored to the organizational needs. So to remind you test planning should begin as early as possible and it should be tailored to the organization and also planning for each test level should start at the initiation for that level for component testing or integration testing or system testing or acceptance testing it should start at the initiation for that level and it will continue throughout the project and it ends at the completion of closer activities for that level. So keep that in mind. And then each level test plan, for example, a component test plan or an integration test plan or a system test plan or acceptance test plan, it should be based on your test strategy. And in large projects, in large programs, we may come up with what we call a master test plan. So whatever these level test plans, they should be consistent with the master test plan. So also the planning identifies for every level, the test planning identifies methods for gathering and tracking metrics because identifying and gathering and tracking metrics is an extremely important activity for monitoring and control activity, which is a very important test management activity and metrics are used to guide the project and they will help you to determine or they will guide you to determine whether you are adhering to the plan or not and also it will help you to assess whether the objectives as stated in your test strategy are met or not met. So as a test manager you must be aware that complex many to many relationships may exist between the test bases. When we are talking about test bases based on your nature of uh, SDLC model and methodology that you are adopting or the complexity of your test project, you may do very detailed 
level of documentation or you may do very less weight or low weight, light weight kind of documentation. No matter what, you have to understand and be aware of the many to many relationships that may exist between the test basis requirements, design, the code, the test conditions, test cases and all that. So, that you have to identify as part of your test planning activity. So, why you have to do that? A test manager must understand this to enable effective implementation of test planning, monitoring and control. You may have to establish a backward, forward traceability to be in control. That is why you have to understand these many to many relationships between the test bases. And the second point is sometimes based on your traceability needs and requirements and controlling monitoring needs, sufficient or appropriate tool decisions may also depend on the understanding of the relationships between the work products. So, because of that you have to be aware of this many to many relationships that may exist between your lot of documentation that comes in the project. Then the second point the test manager should be aware is that the test plan may also list the specific features of the software that are within its scope as well as explicitly identifying features that are not within the scope. This is very important to avoid any potential confusion with rest of the stakeholders. The next point a test manager must consider is that test manager may have to work with the project architects to define the initial test environment specification. So, within the project you have to talk to a lot of people, you have to do a lot of discussions about how the test environment will be done, who will do it and verify availability of the resources required, who will do and help you this and also understand cost and delivery time scales to deliver the test environment. These are very important considerations as a test manager you have to make so that you do a proper test planning which will help you. Then also the third point is the test manager may have to identify a lot of external dependencies like people, organizations providing resources if you are depending on some third party or outsource partners or the deployment team, the database administrators or the third party teams like in our previous example we talked the software team is using third party web services. So, we may have to talk to those companies who are giving those third party web services and to agree on service level agreements. These are all very important tasks, activities or considerations test managers have to do at the time of test planning. So, before we conclude this session, let us recap through a knowledge check. So, I have four statements in front of you. Mark the statements below whether they are true or false. The first statement is test planning is the means by which we trans transform this test strategy into operational plan. Let me read it again. Test planning is the means by which we transform the test strategy into an operational plan. It is a true or false statement. Yes, you are right. It is a true statement. Then the second statement is talking about test planning is a single activity that is only done once. It is not a continuous activity that goes on throughout the project. You agree with this or not? Yes, you are right. It is a false statement. Test process is a continuous activity. It is not a single activity. That is what we talked about in this lesson. The third statement talks about the detailed level test planning specific to each test level should begin at the start of the test process for that level and carry on throughout the project until completion of the closer activities for that level. You agree with me or not? Is it a true statement or not? Yes, you are right. It is a true statement. The fourth point is test managers need not engage with all external dependencies and associated service level agreements need not be identified. I will read it for you again. Test managers need not engage with all external dependencies and associated SLAs need not be identified. You agree with this? No, we will not agree with this. It is a false statement. So, hope you have enjoyed this session and uh, learn and have 